It takes us all to care when a farmer is fair with a check to a back of a packet. That's nice, RSPCA. It's quite musical, actually. And um, yeah, it is, it is true. We should we should take more care. It is on us to care. We should, you know, think more about the products that we're buying just to make sure that we're not contributing to the world being just a little bit worse. Farm, farmer is fair though. That's a weird turn of phrase. I mean, spinach doesn't really give a f how you treat it, so. Oh no. <sighs> what was that packet you were talking about? Oh fuck. All the stupid things I say and do and never really stop when I should never have begun. I really ought to drop it, but it's faster when you don't even have time to stop and think about the things that you were saying, because they never really matter, but it's empty spaces in the air. Fill it up, fill it up, fill it up. Oh no, oh no. All the million little empty spaces in the air. Fill it up, fill it up, fill it up. Oh no. Yes, the RSPCA wandered right into hot water today when it posted an ad on its Twitter feed about RSPCA assured eggs. For those of you who have the distinct pleasure of not living in the UK, sorry America, no, no offence, the RSPCA is the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. It's one of the oldest welfare charities out there, and according to its own website, the first to introduce a law to protect animals and work hard to ensure that all animals can live free from pain and suffering. Get your nooch stained fingers off that keyboard, vegan, I'm getting to it. Now the RSPCA also operate RSPCA Assured, a label that they stick on products from farms that they have vetted um, so that consumers can, and I quote, feel good about your choice when shopping and eating out. Farms that sell products approved by the RSPCA A Oh, that's apt. It looks like screaming. All supposedly meet the highest RSPCA welfare standards. So far, so hypocritical, but why did this particular post cause Twitter to lose its f***ing mind? I mean, other than it, it being Twitter, and that's what it does. Because eggs, in case you didn't know, are farmed in one of the most horrific and brutal ways imaginable. And I say that as someone who has seen so much by this point that going outside and integrating with the rest of society is becoming an increasingly challenging ordeal. I've talked about why I went vegan in the past, but seeing what happens to get eggs into the hands of consumers, that's, that's what sealed it for me. For good. Anyway, as US President Donald Trump famously said after bringing himself to an angry and tearful climax over a photograph of himself in the ensuite of the Lincoln bedroom, back to Twitter. Following this tweet, multiple users basically asked the RSPCA to clarify their position, how they could, how the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals could designate eggs as anything even close to something that you could feel good about buying. One user in particular repeatedly asked about the killing of male chicks, to which the RSPCA, RSPCA responded with pretty much the same tweet several times. We are pleased that research institutes are finding ways to tell if a chick is male before it's hatched, preventing the need to kill it after it's been born. When the same user threatened to cancel her donations, the response was thus. We permit both the use of gas and maceration for the killing of day-old chicks. Done correctly, both methods can offer an effective and humane kill, and our welfare standards set strict parameters stating how both of these methods must be carried out to ensure this is the case. Gas, maceration, male chicks, day-old male chicks. I thought we were talking about eggs. The whole point is that the egg isn't fertilized. There's no there's no chick to kill. You just take the egg from the the chicken and away it goes. Well, here's why your little cholesterol soaked heart attack in a shell you have for breakfast is actually covered in blood. chickens lay eggs. 
the egg hatches, the female comes out, she is reared in a very short amount of time to lay as many eggs as possible, growing up in torturous and horrendous conditions before she eventually goes mad and is either the victim of or partakes in the cannibalization of other chickens in their squalid living conditions. But the males, they're a waste product. And you're not stupid, I know you're not stupid. You know what waste product means when it comes to a business. Okay, let's bring it back. So, for those of you who don't know, when we talk about gas in regards to animal agriculture and, and welfare and slaughter and all that, we're talking about a CAS system, a controlled atmosphere stunning system. Um, and this is a, a system where basically you will find a mixture of gases, sometimes 70% carbon dioxide, for example, into which the animals are either moved into by a conveyor belt or they're lowered into in a cage. The gas in these systems is anoxic. There's no oxygen in there. These systems are actually more commonly used for stunning animals before slaughter, animals like pigs. The process of being lowered into a, a pit, a gas chamber, which has no oxygen, is like being burned from the inside. These animals thrash in panic. It is, it's terrifying, it's painful. It goes on for a long time. And quite often, it doesn't even work. They go through this torture and come out the other side conscious, only to then be slaughtered anyway, while alive and awake and able to feel it. male chicks though, what happens is <sighs> maceration. It's another clever word like somatic cells in dairy that most people would associate with something else, most notably chemistry or winemaking, but has a, a, a hidden extra meaning when it comes to animal agriculture. You can't really tell what it means off the top of your head just by hearing the word. In this context though, baby chicks, The animals are moved along a conveyor belt, and assuming they make it to the under other end of the conveyor belt, it's common for them to fall off the production line, to get crushed on the floor, or get caught up in the machinery of the conveyor belt and torn to pieces. If they do make it to the end of the conveyor belt, they're dropped into a grinder, alive. These animals, these baby animals, these infants, day-old chicks, are dropped into a grinder to be ground up alive. The RSPCA's response? The RSPCA assured must provide commercially viable farm animal standards or else farmers wouldn't join the scheme and more animals would suffer. In other words, we have to appeal to their business interests. We have to meet them halfway. It's not good enough. That is, it's not good enough. Society for the prevention of cruelty to animals. This is what they're allowing. I mean, I don't know their, their financial structure at all, but if the RSPCA in any way makes money from products that have their seal of approval on, is that not a conflict of interest? I don't know. I don't, I don't have the answer to that. I do have the answer of how you can stop it, though. Meeting businesses halfway, allowing them to do one horrific thing to reduce it, because it's, it's not even that the, the animals who aren't ground up are having a good time this increase in standards is meaningless if it's the whole process is still being allowed to continue. You have the power to stop it. The RSPCA has proven itself to be a pet protection society with little care for the animals that go through the horrors of agriculture and slaughter. But you can stop the whole thing. That's what's so amazing about the situation. That's what's so amazing about the animal agriculture system on the whole. You have the power to stop it. We all have the power to stop it. This is supply and demand. 100% it's supply and demand. If we don't 
provide the demand, there's been no supply. We've already seen some of the biggest industry giants like Tyson selling off their food lots. The people at the top know where this is going and they are selling their interests. And we're getting startups that are also going fully plant-based. And it's these businesses in the middle, they're gonna struggle. But if you stop giving them the demand, if you stop justifying what they're doing, they'll stop doing it. Eat amazing food, feel better, have a better quality life, and know that you're doing something amazing for the rest of the world, you're helping protect the environment, and you're not funding this. Because I guarantee, cigarette packet style, if consumers at the point of purchase were made aware of what happens to get these eggs on shelves, they wouldn't buy them. So don't buy them. The monsters that do this, that support this, that come up with these ideas, that build this machinery, they all go on to make money elsewhere. They always do. That's an issue for another time. But the animals will be safe. This torture will stop. So do better. Be better. Save the animals. Save the planet. Save yourself. Go vegan.